won't be able to have a back and forth with the planning board members or the applicants verbally. Um, all their communication will be via chat or perhaps messages they sent in earlier to staff for the record. Um, prior to opening our first public hearing, we have a public comment period that's open to anybody to come to the podium to speak about an issue that might be on their mind they want to raise about city about the city um but if, if you're here for our two hearings one hearing on a, a new two family at 43 summer street and the second hearing for a site plan amendment for sixth floor at 79 king street hold your comments until those items come up so is there anyone here who would like to make a comment um, for the planning board and we'll go to the in-person crowd first all three of you are good all right carolyn is there anybody out on uh i don't see any hand um i'm sorry but yes um there is one chat hello my name is hannah by and i'm on a butter on over street okay so this is about the public hearing so okay. um i won't read that okay. now since you haven't opened the public hearing good. Good. Okay, doc. All right. Anyone else who would like to make a comment? David, good evening. Friendly. Yeah, you're docking. You're docked a half an hour. Dock my pay. Yeah. All right, then. Let us uh, now open up a public hearing for a site plan review to build a two family by New Way Homes Inc. at 43 Summer Street. Map ID 31B-030. Um, before we start the uh, hearing, uh, in order to be as transparent as possible, I want to let everybody know that I'm the president of uh, Friends of Northampton Trails, and one of the projects we run is called the Bikes for All Project, which accepts donated bicycles, and then we have volunteer mechanics who fix those bicycles and then give them out to folks who can't afford them. This operation was um, taking place on this property in the red garage that has just been knocked down. We had a, a big fan of uh, our Bikes for All project were the previous owners, um, Elizabeth, Elizabeth and Tom Kane, um, and they gave us that property rent free. When Mr. Hansel and New Way Homes purchased the property about a year ago, he continued that same arrangement. Since then, about two months ago, the a project has relocated up to Florence um, prior to the, the building being demolished, thank goodness. So I just wanted to let everybody know that there's no financial kind of linkage between our two organizations. So that being said, please, we'll hear from the applicant. All right, great. Rebecca Lee with Arlovac Associates, located at 40 School Street in Westfield, here tonight with the applicant, Mr. John Hansel, to present the proposed duplex and associated site improvements at 43 Summer Street. Oh, wait, we need that second, third thing. Sorry. Oh, part of that? Yeah. Um, okay, now you can share. And then just, is your mic green? Yes, okay. you can turn it on for me, thank you. All right, you good? Okay, perfect. <clears throat> so this site is located at the corner of State Street and Summer Street. Um, currently, it's it's located in the Urban Residency District. It has an existing duplex on the property, as well as a um, barn and a paved um, parking area. Um, the applicant is proposing to demolish that barn and the parking area as well as relocate um, the curb cut to accommodate the new um, site improvements. So this is the layout plan that shows um, the proposed duplex to the north of the um, property. The existing duplex will remain. Um, <clears throat> the new duplex will 
um, actually be bring the site under compliance as far as setbacks go. So we are meeting all setback requirements um, and all other dimensional regulation requirements. We're providing adequate parking throughout the site. Um, <clears throat> two new spaces are going to be located to the west side of the new duplex, um, and those will be um, using permeable pavers for um, LID technology to kind of incorporate that into site improvements. Um, and then there will be six parking spaces within the paved area, as well as a, a shared drive there. Um, we're also proposing a bike locker that's located right here where my mouse is. And as I mentioned, um, the existing duplex will remain. So as far as the proposed grading goes, um, <clears throat> the new grading is going to mimic the existing grading just because there's not much space to work with and we have to um, you know meet existing grades around the existing structure. Um, we are proposing a catch basin to mitigate stormwater runoff from the proposed parking area um, which is being connected to an existing um, drainage structure in State Street. Uh, however, we received comment from DPW that we can talk about uh, later on um, where Doug McDonald would prefer that we we do not um, install that connection. <clears throat> Excuse me, install that connection. Um, the water is coming from the main off of State Street and um, sewer will connect into the existing sewer line that's due north of the property. And that summarizes the site plan set. I'll bring up the architecturals for hmm. your... Before you leave the site plan, oh, sure. yep. just tell us about the, uh, the, drive, the uh, entrance to the lot. You're going from two curb cuts to one. Could you just show us that? Yeah, sure. Yep. Um, so the two curb cuts, the existing curb cuts, actually, let me go to the demo plan. It might be a little bit easier to see here. So one curb cut is located here where my mouse is. Hopefully you can see that. The other curb cut is located right here. And we are reducing the two down to one, as you had mentioned. And that will be in between these radii here that um, you can see kind of in a bolder uh, lines, line type. That's the dimension of that width, the so I saw that comment too. It's right now it's proposed at 20 feet. Reduced down to 15 under. <laughs> If there's no further questions on the site plan set, I can jump over to the architecturals if that would please the board. Okay, great. So these are just, you know, some typical concepts of what um, we're planning on doing. These are the floor plans here. Um, so the idea is to have four bedroom uh how many baths how many baths two and a half two and a half there's a covered porch on the front <clears throat> and then two parking spaces will be on the back end of the of the building so that summarizes the, the presentation. We did receive a couple of comments from Carolyn from the planning department, which we can go through now if, if that's what the board would like to do. Sure. Okay, great. And Carolyn, feel free to stop me at any point in time. Um, first comment was in regards to a traffic study. Um, though a traffic study is not required, traffic mitigation is required. Section 11.62 needs to be addressed based on the assumption of two additional peak hour trips, one per unit. 
a payment in lieu of traffic mitigation can be made in the amount of $1,000 per unit or a one-time payment of $2,000. And that's understood. <clears throat> um, second question, site plan requires an upgrade of the sidewalk around the property to cement concrete, minimally four feet wide. However, because the city is proposing an upgrade along State Street that will likely include a curb extension at State Street and summer intersection, the extents of what this project would be required to upgrade would stop short of the intersection on both frontages. So plans should be submitted showing sidewalk replacement from about five feet south of the hydrant on state to the northerly property line on state and starting from about the no parking sign on summer to the westerly property line on summer. <clears throat> I had um, spoken to Carolyn a little bit on this one um, <clears throat> and I can pull up the site plan so that we can show you. How do I zoom? All right. So because the limit of work is really only in that Northern portion of the site there, um, we would like to propose the replacement of the sidewalk within that limit of work. Um, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Yeah, sure. So um, I think in Carolyn, you know, feel free to chime in. But originally, um, it was noted that we would have to replace the sidewalk from about this location down here where my mouse is. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the hydrant isn't being shown to the northern property line. Um, and then also from the no parking sign on off of summer to the westerly property line um, but we're not doing any improvements in that area so we think it would be appropriate to only have to replace the sidewalk along the the frontage within the limit of work and, and just to be clear that um the reason for the points of starting and stopping around the corner is that um DPWs has engaged um, engineering um, firm to look at the whole three corridor and think of and is in the process of doing design for intersection improvements along the corridor when they call traffic. And so this is one of the intersections where one of the improvements it doesn't make sense to require a sidewalk all the way around the corner when it would just be ripped up to accommodate the construction for either raised crosswalks or raised intersection, depending on what the final design is. So I um, worked with um, Donald Scalia to think about sort of what made sense for the sidewalk improvements. And um, um, so we came up with this hydrant north, basically on the state street side. You know, I didn't get a chance to look closely at the Summer Street um, dry, uh, sidewalk. I don't know what kind of condition that's in, but it certainly can't be as bad as uh, the State Street side, I don't think. Uh, it's pretty it, bad. It, it, it pretty it, bad? Equally bad, yeah. Equally bad, yeah. It's one of those, you know. Asphalt on top of concrete. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, so the DPW is not, the, the proposed work is not long summer. Confused as to where the DPW work is around the corner, so okay. it it'll so oh, it will be that whole intersection. Okay, but it yeah. doesn't go up Summer Street. Okay, beyond probably where the no parking sign is currently on Summer Street. Yep. So okay. whatever that is, ten fifteen feet beyond the intersection. Okay, is sort of probably probably where that work limit will um, terminate. Is we're asking for concrete sidewalks? Yeah, cement concrete. Okay, and what is the thought on the, um, the I guess the work here, even though it's one, one piece of property, that it's not in. Well, I think it's over there because I don't really understand it. Yeah, I, I, I think in the past, if any work is done on a given lot, yeah. um, we've asked them to replace it's one piece of property. Yeah. We've asked you them. You can't take advantage of the property on over just here and then not right. do anything over here. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. 
that. Yep. You have to take the take the good with that. Well, we have no other opportunity to get a new sidewalk there, so it would just be like asphalt for the next fifty years. Um, to the west of that, on uh, going up the hill on summer. On this property, right? Like this is the only chance yeah. that we would have to yeah. get a new sidewalk. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Will make shoveling a lot easier too. That'll probably be our recommendation then, as a board, to ask the applicant to, to condition the applicant to um, install new sidewalk on all portions of the sidewalk, other than in the areas noted by the DPW and staff. Okay, even though it's outside of the work area, right? We're thinking we're considering the whole property. I mean, you are taking advantage of the whole property. The value of the property is going up. Everything else. May I comment? Yeah. Come on up to the. Oh, yeah. Oh, hold on, John. Right. We haven't opened up for public comment yet. You want to wait and then we'll ask. Yeah, thanks for that. Well, but she should really. Yeah. That's the presenter. Um, sure. <clears throat> okay. Um, so we'll, we'll let here John speak to that one. Um, and then moving on to the next comment here. <clears throat> so you have no landscape and no lighting plan. Um, you may have told me that you were only proposing building lights, which is totally appropriate. So that's fine, just confirm. So this is confirmation that there's not gonna be any site lighting, just the typical you know, building wall pack lighting. And that will all be you know in accordance with the regulations, dark sky compliance and what, um, for landscaping, I would expect at least two trees on the state street side somewhere given the length of the street frontage and um, understood. That's not a problem. And then Carolyn, I don't have the DPW comments handy. Do you? Yeah. Okay. Um, the proposed sewer connects to the sewer line on an adjacent property and then connect directly to the um, street sewer. As such, the sewer service may be subject to backups. Um, and so then they um, recommend this or they um, state the standard of um, connecting directly to the sewer with a minimum 1% slope. Um, and then and so that can be taken care of during building permit um, or pre-building permit review. Um, they noted the the driveway was wider than the 15 feet um, allowed without approval by the planning board and recommended um, 15 feet. Um, the DPW won't allow the drain connection as designed. Um, this is the storm drain question with the catch basin. And um, plans include notes and details for erosion and sediment control, but the measures have not been included on the site drawings. Construction plans should include specification and location of erosion and sediment control measures in the drawings. And that's it. There's no major trees, no major tree protection, unfortunately. Yet. So they just don't want to structure at all? Oh, well, the, there's a reduction in overall impervious cover on the site. And so, and, and no, they're comfortable with um, the way and the fact that they're providing the impervious um, or the pervious pavement in the back. Um, and they were fine with that. Part of the reduction in impervious area? Um, if yes, it, partially yes. If we eliminated that permeable pavers, we would still be less than okay. what was there before. It just you know, as an additional measure. Okay. Um, I, was, I was just curious if the site detail shows like an underdrain for that permeable pavers, but I don't know where that underdrain would go. I was going to ask if it would go to that catch basin, but now it's going to Right, right. So, I don't know if you're 
Um, so I think this is just to assist with infiltration into the soil itself. There doesn't need to be necessarily a positive connection. Um, it's just to, like I said, it's, you know, in a gravel pit and to help the water get into the back into the soil. Okay. <clears throat> Cause that's a common practice with, you know, our, the infiltration basins that we normally design. We usually do like an under drain along the bottom of the basin, just to help that runoff get into the soil quicker. Okay. Yeah. Correct. The water Convey. The water. Right. Right. <clears throat> Other questions from the board? Are we open to public hearing? So, just to be clear, the proposal you're asking for a new connection in the street. For sewer. Oh, for sewer. Yes, yeah, for to sewer. serve these buildings, and it just has to be done in accordance with their standard for connecting to the sewer. That was the first one. Okay. Got it. I thought that was a little odd that they you'd cross into the neighbor's property to connect. Is the sewer line right right out there on the street? Uh, I thought maybe that's why you did it that way. Is there was it was. Um, so that manhole that we're connecting into is right on the property line. Right. So, um, kind of the, the path of least resistance, instead of, you know, tearing up the road, there's a, an available sewer manhole that's right on the property line. Uh, oh, I see. And then it goes into the street right yeah. there and connect. So they just want you to just connect in the street. So there was one line for the one um, line for the duplex, or they didn't say? They didn't say, and that has changed at various times, depending on um, whether, I, I think there's, a, I don't know. I'm going to leave that to them. <laughs> them being DPW. not DP, the DPW. Yeah, because they have control over how they want the sewer connectors okay. to be made. Because there are four bedrooms each, right? So it could be two and a half baths, could be a busy place. Okay. <laughs> Um, in your opening remarks, you mentioned that there was a, a, a currently a bar in there that was going to be taken down. So that has been taken down already. I think it's in the process. Yeah. And I just want to clarify, I, I assume it went through a demolition delay process. And if, if you're not familiar, I, I yeah, would ask. Ms. I'm going to defer to okay. the applicant so, for that one. All right. Mr. Hansel, would you? For the proper channels. Okay, great. Um, I didn't quite see on the architectural drawings the second egress from the second floor. How does that work? Does it drop down into the backyards? It's, it's a single unit. You don't need a second unit. Upstairs? In the bedroom windows. Or yeah. Okay. Fire escapes. Okay. Not yeah. separate apartments, right? I mean, at the time of the the building permit, it will have to have however many egress. Are you don't need a second egress on the second floor. You have the windows that have to be cold, the regular size, certain height off the floor. So there's no egress on the second floor. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Well, why don't we open it up to the public then? Is there anyone in the audience here and the chambers who would like to speak? I understand how the city likes to get everything out of the developer and do sidewalks on both sides, but it gets to the point where that's going to run twenty five, thirty thousand dollars. And I understand that I, my belief is the city should take care of its own stuff, but I understand what you want to do. But I'm not going on that side. And it gets to the point where I could just do an A and R on this lot very simply, do a single family by right, not even have to come in front of the board, and not have to fix any sidewalks. You can do it. That's why I might do it. That's what I'm trying to say to you. To do it, that's like the simplest solution. Because oh, you make it sound like you're doing such a favor to do. Let me do a field hole. Oh, hold on, Sam. Sam, hold on. Let's walk I, through this. So let's be clear. I am doing a favor. I'm glad you see it that way. You should too. So, uh, Mr. Hansel, we understand your your objection, the the cost factor. Yep. Um, but this is what we've done with other applicants. There's a precedent for this. 
We've asked them to do this. We're really working hard to make sure that sidewalks are up upgraded when we have this opportunity. It's I don't know the exact measurements there of that piece on summer, but yeah. I I would like to say something actually. Firstly, one of the points about infill is that, that everyone gets the benefit and there's a cost. Of it. And one of the costs is that the property, which is getting almost divided in this situation, part of that has everything has to get done. That is a fair consideration. And to be challenged by someone is absurd. Uh, Oh, Sam, Sam, no, hold, hold on. Let's let's not editorialize too much. We've had other applicants talk to us about the cost of the given project too. <laughs> yeah, a fair yep. thing. The cost is a fair thing. Yep, yep. There's lots of projects that don't happen because of cost. Right, right. That is not our concern. Can, can we just say, look? There's a lot of us in the city who think the city should take on more of the cost of sidewalks. And I encourage people, if that's your opinion, to vote for city councilors who will approve the budget that will pay for all that. Saying, right, right, excuse me. Right now, we don't have that situation. The only way we have to get any new sidewalks in the city is to ask property owners to do it. We understand there's a cost involved. And if you want to go ANR and do it that way and buy right, that's fine. That's illegal. And, and ANR has its own cost. And you can weigh the cost and benefits of that. We have no other way to get new sidewalks in the city other than this right now, and that's nothing we can do about it, no matter how much we wish DPW was building sidewalks like crazy up and down the streets. But this is the world we live in right now. So we just had an election, and we'll see what happens, you know? I, I also want to bring it back to the, the ordinance um, that there are site plan approval requirements that um, um, are triggered when an applicant comes forward that relates to making sure that there are safe pedestrian access points to and from the property. So it's not just, it's not about extracting from the applicant, but it's for making sure that every project that comes along is meeting those standards of providing safe um, vehicular, pedestrian, and bicycle access. And so if the sidewalks are deficient, which is clearly spelled out in the ordinance, um, it's the applicant's responsibility to um, make sure they're not deficient um, to meet those standards. Um, and um, that's been you know, an issue, um, a code requirement for a number of years. So it's not just something it's new, but it's also obviously very important in the core neighborhoods where walking um, is um, what we're trying to encourage and is a key component of living in sort of the downtown neighborhood. So. Thank you. Um, other comments from the folks in the in-person meeting at council chambers? I have a, I'm a neighbor to this property. Just give us your name, please. Deborah Daniel. And I had a question about the parking because I didn't see it. Maybe I did look at the plans ahead of time. And uh, it was mentioned tonight that there are two spaces, parking spaces behind the new building. I can show you. But, but what is access to that? And are they spaces one behind the other? And it seems like eight spaces or eight spaces total for, I can't remember how many bedrooms are in the original building, but we're adding eight bedrooms here. And I know that there are rules about how many spaces that have to be made when developers come in, but it seems like that's enough. That's yes. And I may not have read it. Great. Great. Sure. If you would just highlight those parking areas again for us. So there's going to be three yep. here, three, yeah. three here. Oh, I'm, I'll do my mouse. Three yep. here, three here, yep. and then two back to back here. Here. Mm -hmm. So that just seems like an odd access when you have so many unit, or so many bedrooms in this piece of property. It, but in this district, that's yep. all that we're requiring. Yeah. And it's pretty common in urban areas to have that um, back to back parking where you have to negotiate those. Two parking spaces. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But 
Thank you. And any other? And the parking is based on units, not bedrooms. All right, uh, Carolyn, is there anybody in the Zoom portion that? Um, so I'll start with a chat from the beginning. Um, Hannah Bai, hello, my name is Hannah Bai. I'm in a butter at one Albert Street. The proposed structure is behind my house. I'm concerned about lighting. Hope the outside lighting will be down for focus. And it's also that there are no motion sensor lighting from the outside back or backside of the building. They're very disruptive and would shine into my bedroom window. Also, the houses in this neighborhood are old. Um, my house was constructed in 1870. The pounding and banging that went on when the barn was taken down rattled my house to the foundation. I hope that during construction of the new house, pounding and banging of that magnitude would be kept to a minimum. Thank you. Um, actually, any lights on the front side of the building will shine into my bedroom, not the back side, as I said in my original note. Um, I'm sorry. Okay. So then the last comment by Hannah by also, never mind. I was reading the plan wrong. My house is on the back side. Yep. And that's all the chats that we have. Good. Beginning of any little end of this <clears throat> story. Is there any screening from on this property to the abutting properties for public? I don't know. Are there screening for the No. There's no screening. So are we worried about headlights from these new uh, parking spaces pointing more? Well, they, they sign into a large driveway and a bar and a back driveway. They don't come into the abutting house in that area. Okay. Um, and and I would say to Hannah by that uh, the applicant is just proposing small lights over each doorway. I'm downcasting. They shouldn't be. Um, they're shouldn't. They're they're not allowed to have any light cast beyond the property line. Um, I'm not sure about motion timers, but uh, that again is something that's certainly up to the applicant. As long as the light isn't cast beyond the property line, the applicant or the homeowner can do as they wish. I believe there's also a property between one Aldridge Street and this property. Anyway, yeah. And in terms of the construction noise, that is what it is. You know, they, there's regulations about when they can start construction and when they can end it. But in terms of noise, um, you have to live with it for a little while. And they won't have the heavy machinery in there that they, they did for the destruction. So I think um, you won't notice it as much. All right. That was the last chat. All right. So uh, now let's hold on a minute so we don't close public hearing in case we have questions for the applicant. Any other questions? Um, we're pretty clear on the conditions, and I think the applicant is. Okay. Motion to close the public hearing. All right. Motion's made and seconded. Any discussion? All right. All in favor of closing the public hearing? Animus. So now I will walk through the conditions that we talked about. Yep, 15 feet. We have a payment um, in lieu of a traffic study for traffic mitigation that the applicant understands. Do we need to specify whether it's all at one church and two payments? Uh, it's, uh, typically, you require before certificate of occupancy, so um, and it's not typically divided because they get okay. occupancy. Of, I mean, they could do occupancy for each one. Ah, okay. All right. In that way, it could be divided. Um, I think uh, so. I had recommended that uh, related to the um, overall plans that, that revised plans 
um, showing detail of the sidewalk replacement uh, along State and Summer be submitted in the revised plans. Those plans should also show a narrower um, driveway opening, the final plans. Um, and um, there was the connection. Um, yeah, they could do the um, and the sewer connection. Yeah, should be in the revised plans as well. Is there one other plan? Under? Uh, shade trees. Uh, okay. The storm drain. Right, right no, no, no storm drain. Are no. those shade trees supposed to be? Is there a? Is there a tree built there? There's not, but it, they they can plant on the lawn. Okay. And uh, the thing about siltation devices is just boilerplate on oh, erosion control. Erosion control. Um, <clears throat> yes, well, they showed, they described it, so that should be on the plan. Um, right. Um, um, I would also recommend that um, the Maintenance plan for the previous uh, permeable pavement is recorded with the decision, so that it carries with the decision for the property owners um, for that driver inspection. I move to support the property on this time around. Right? So, yeah. uh, on Summer Street with the Second. Okay, motions were made and seconded to approve the application for to build a two-family home by New Way. Any more discussion? No, I just you know I, I, I I'll editorialize and say I appreciate it. We need more apartments in downtown and near the downtown area. So this is exactly what the city wants. Um, so it's a I'm glad that applications like this are coming before us. All right. If there are no other discussion, all those in favor of approving the application with the conditions mentioned. Okay. Motions made, approved unanimous. Thank you. Thank you both. Good luck with your project. All right. Have a good night. Good night. You ready to break? We can move right into our second one. This, you want to get your technology going? I will get the technology going, yes. <laughs> Yeah, do you want to drive, dude? Sir, your stuff is at the back, obviously. Right. So you right. can just. Nice Google view again for that. Damn. So uh, at this point, we're going to open up a, a public hearing posted for 720 tonight for a major site plan amendment at a sixth floor by 79 King Street LLC at 79 King Street, map ID 31B21C. So the applicant is 79 King Street LLC. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm David Kubik with BKSK Architects, the architect on the project. Um, we're happy to be back. Um, 
um, with the drawings today, there are a few things since we uh, last saw you that we've kind of reconfigured a little bit on the interior. Um, but mostly what we're here um, to talk about is the addition of the sixth floor and how that meets the newly uh, issued form-based zoning, which at the time when we first submitted wasn't in effect. Uh, so that's really sort of the recap of where we were and where we are today. Uh, so as we look um, at the ground floor, a simple sort of, what's that? Okay, to share it. Oh, oh, for Zoom. Yeah. yeah. Good point. Yeah. Yeah, if we hit that, I think that'll get us. All right. That's better, right? Um, so again, uh, largely everything is about um, the sixth floor addition. Looking here at the ground floor, everything remains um, the same. There's a small commercial space facing King Street, um, the residential lobby just behind that with access along the side. Um, we still have um, the uh, parking facility here at the ground floor, which is um, now an open garage, and it's actually two levels um, of parking, which we'll show you. Um, the entrance remains the same. So the footprint and overall site plan is really identical to what we had submitted previously. Um, this is just sort of an upper level within the parking area, just to show how the stacker system works for the um, cars in that area. Um, this was really the one change, which is here on the southwest corner of the second floor is where we've decided to locate some residential amenity spaces. So uh, here right on the corner is sort of a multi-use kind of lounge space for the residents. And then in this green tone um, is a small gym. Previously in our last application, uh, those were apartments. Um, oh, there we go. Um, and then moving up, this is the typical floor plan, which again, remains the same. And then on the sixth floor, it's the same floor plan. There's just a little bit of a setback along the front facade. Uh, here's the roof plan. You can see the compliant setback um, for that last story for the sixth floor. And we can talk about the height of that in, in the elevations. Um, uh, this roof area is unoccupied. Uh, the elevator and stair bulkhead rises to the roof. There is elevator access, and then there's a residential amenity terrace here, um, and a large solar array on the on the back. Um, we're still committed to having this project be built with mass timber and to passive house standards. Um, so we included this slide last time just to speak about the the quality of construction and how it'll affect the overall indoor spaces. Um, it's still something that's a core component of our project. We're really excited about. The first level currently is a concrete podium, but we're going to still strive to see if we can't make that mass timber if it's a possibility. Um, we can't, we haven't gotten to that level of detail as we'll go through CDs, but um, that is something we're going to explore. Yeah. Um, as we get into the form based zoning, um, you know, we, we had put this together in the last presentation, so we kept it. But you know, looked carefully at the architectural language of of the town of Northampton and the um, a lot a lot of the concepts that are baked into that zoning um, we've taken and incorporated into our proposed design. So this is where we were last time, previously approved, um, and um, you can see we had the articulated bays. The window rhythms were a little bit asymmetrical, um, and so in the new proposal, we have the articulated bays and we found a way to revise the floor plan to create a more even um, window rhythm, which was something that was talked about. Um, and you can see the additional floor here um, set back uh, per the zoning. Um, one one thing we've noted in our application is that the new form based zoning asks, asks for that setback to occur at 55 feet. Um, we're showing it at 59, which is only four feet over and the real primary reason for that is to allow for the two levels of parking in the ground floor. Um, we have a 17 foot ground floor and we need that dimension. That's the kind of bare minimum to get two levels of parking. So um, we thought that was a good reason to come to you with 59 feet at that setback. 
um, to allow for more um, car parking for the residents and getting cars off the street, just taking less pressure off the tap. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, hmm. Hold on. Oh, geez. There we go. What is the shadowy area on top of the sixth floor? That's the bulkhead, which is set back. So the middle portion of it is the elevator overrun, and the two lower sides um, is where the fire stair comes up, <clears throat> and the, just the elevator lobby that serves that elevator. Um, we do have some perspectives on the street to show you the visibility of that bulkhead um, because it's very set back. So um, we looked at that in view study so that you can see the impact of what that looks like. And the elevator goes there to allow access to the amenities. For the residents to access that public terrace. I mean, does the zoning speak to a use like that? Yeah. Um, so in terms of height, um, elevator shafts and um, or bulkheads, I guess, are not counted in the overall height. So height it is, goes to the roof, um, but not those elements that are above the roof. It's, it's, like the whole lobby. it's not just like the overrun of the elevators. It's, like it's the, the vestibule. Yeah, that's okay. Well, yeah, I think if you're going to provide public amenity spaces, you have to make them accessible. Um, that's the roof plan. If it helps, you can see the the lobby sitting in front of the two elevator cars. So it's just as wide as the elevator shaft. We've tried to keep it modest. Um, and then the, the fire stair is there. Um, we're equally motivated to keep it as small as possible. So we worked with Kone Elevator to understand the exact minimum overrun they need for that elevator. And that's, that's what we're um, showing in this height. And again, we have some perspectives that I think look a, a lot better than a straight on elevation, which no one will ever really see. <laughs> but, uh, so this was previously approved. <clears throat> and then again, uh, the currently proposed. You can see both on the top left of the slide and the bottom right of the slide, the, the 10 foot setback. And and the open garage. Yeah, so as we've been calling it, sort of the head building is um, is clad in brick, and then the tail, if you will, um, above the second floor is a um, a cement board with sort of a warm red tone to it, and then that ground floor is in brick, um, cladding the open garage area. So speaking of material, just to, um, I know that the staff report back in the 2021 that um this was it went to both central business architecture and the planning board um central business architecture has uh, more currently with jurisdiction over material and um, um looks towards creating um using the brick palette basically on um commercial buildings it's not required, but it's um, they certainly require more natural materials um, for the front building and, and sort of what the brick, I think that's what they started um, down this path. Um, now it's under planning board jurisdiction. Planning board doesn't deal in materials per se. <laughs> um, so the, it's still being proposed as, as brick for that front building, but again, it, or the front sort of massing. Um, the um but it's common that there are different materials in um the projects that both central business architecture review and planning board reviews for the front and then materials change towards the rear because it's really what's front and center and visible from main street or pleasant street or the other side street thank you this is the previously proposed elevation um, facing the rear lot line towards the, the bike path um, and just an updated current elevation showing that uh, material change and the, the open garage at the ground floor. Um, and then just two kind of axonometric views just to show the project kind of overall for a better understanding. You can see the two bulkheads mm -hmm. here again. And then we thought, oh, and then 
I'm sure you saw this as part of the application, but we did take your form based zoning and prepared a, you know, a thorough analysis section by section to state what was required and how we're proposing um, and how we're complying with each of those sections and then included um, diagrams where relevant. So again, capturing and defining the, the requirements about our articulated bays or window proportions or void to solid ratios. Um, and then the diagram there on the lower right, which so let's see if I can't get into that. I'm gonna do this the old fashioned way here. That's not going to help. Here we go. We just wanted to show that building section where you can see the the stacked car parking system mm -hmm. um, that we're coordinating and how that's nicely snugly fit into the ground floor height, which was the real primary reason um, we're setting back at the height we are. It's none of my business, but out of curiosity, mm -hmm. if one unit gets one stack of cars, how do you coordinate this part of there? Yeah, I think you could do it different ways, but the systems are pretty intelligent. So it's more like, here's my key fob, please get my car. And then they shuffle yeah. and then they bring your car to the bottom and then you can take your, you can get out your car. So it's actually like a, oh, whatever. yeah. <laughs> and getting a Pepsi. <laughs> it's a little bit, yes. And it takes into account the size of the pickup trucks and vans that are being built these days. Yeah, we'll have to obviously work with the specs to know what can fit and what can't. Um, and again, that's why we want to make sure we've got enough room in there so we're not excluding, you know, there might be like giant vehicles that can't make it in there, but all right. standard vehicles. Just waiting for the new code to the 2121 code, probably, which I think allows higher as timber. So I don't. I don't I'm, I've either. never done a mass timber residential, but I, I don't know that. Is it allowed right now under this code? Yes, it is. You could do five on top of one. Uh, yeah, you two. could do more than five. So it'd be type four. And I can have my colleagues speak up. But um, it'd be construction class type four. Um, and that that actually allows you a number of stories. Yeah. Oh, it's protected. It's not. It's not like stick built where you're where you're capped at four or five, depending on what your class is. You can actually go a bunch higher than that. I mean, we're not tying anything to the timber framing. No, I don't think it has anything to do with zoning. It was no, more but just a, right. But if you did switch, point. there may be dimensional things that changed based on the. I mean, you could come back. I guess at that point, if you well, there's also interesting. I thought and uh, commendable that you had a ten foot floor to floor minimum for the upper floors. Um, which is more than enough space to accommodate any mass timber solution. So we wouldn't be pumping it up unnecessarily for for any of those reasons. But um, the 10 foot is plenty of space for that. Yeah. Uh, and then we just wanted to finish with this, which was two views from the north and two views from the south. And basically the closer one is when you first start to see the bulkhead. And the second one that's further away just shows you um, how the how the bulkhead will start to become visible. So again, from the north, from that far away, you know, you're just barely seeing a little ladder stick up. And then from a little farther away, you start to see a sliver. So the bulkhead location is really favorable because it's set back from the edges. So the elevations can be a little misleading. It looks like this really big box, but you know, set the fact that it's set back as far as it is is really uh, helpful, and it minimizes the the view of that. So again, from the south, you just see a tiny little sliver there. As you start stepping back, you start to see a little bit more, but in a sort of very common bulkhead like language. I would imagine during the hot summer, you'll want to add those popular sails up there now, or some kind of shading structure. For the amenities, the garden, the rooftop garden. I'm only thinking down the road. I don't know if that impacts on our whole high end of the solar panels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, seriously, if they or anything like that, can we even I don't... well is it temporary though? I mean, if they if it's just a sale, that's one thing, but what if they put up a, a metal framework with uh, some kind of a canopy over it? That just wouldn't be allowed by the building inspector. I think it would have to come back. 
if there's a structure put on or another, and then we'd evaluate you know, whether that is a building element that then yeah. we yeah. in So it might just be tables and umbrellas for all I know, but they might also go to those sails or some kind of structure. I just okay. Uh, and that's our last page. Zero. The overall building height below. Yes, we're complying with the overall building height. It's that initial fifth floor setback. Yeah, we're 59 instead of 55. And again, all driven because we're trying to provide that parking. So that would be a waiver from the guidance that the code um, because of the setback, it's not a height. But going through the chart, which is all here in every other in every other respect here. <clears throat> Thank you. 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 Thank
All right. Well, the reason I'm asking is that we at our first hearing, we talked a little bit about the uh, providing ample parking for bicycles. And I know yep. a lot has been made about yep. the residents. Um, and so and we thought perhaps the original count for the bicycle parking and the covered parking was small. I don't know if you've looked at that and if you have the room to increase that at all. Um, I have to try to remember exactly how it was proposed last time. There were, I think there were there were 32, 32, 34, I forget exactly how many parking spaces in that detached sort of Back standalone here. building behind the behind the larger structure, behind the residential building, that sort of parklet area. Um similar to just what just got built at Village Com uh North Commons at Village Hill. With the that. covered roof and open area underneath, and yeah. That's what that so rectangle very similar, is. Very similar right here. model to that. Okay. There are other versions of that that could probably accommodate more bikes if needed, but yeah, space space does get a little tight back there. Because I would suggest that there'll be more. I, there's no other storage for these apartments um, in the basement, or there's no we don't have storage area lower level. Um, so, but I think it's also a little bit. Uh, we have to sort of see how the market responds in terms of how many cars actually fill up because we could easily convert some of those parking spaces to more bike storage. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's a little bit of flexibility there if we need to pivot. But this felt like the right balance in terms of how much space we had available to dedicate for both parking and bikes. All right, I would just suggest if you had a chance to increase the size of that covered storage area, from 32 bikes to say even 42 bikes, 46 bikes, that's only, you know, one per apartment. Um, there's 88 apartment units, that's only one bicycle per apartment. Um, often it'll be more, I think that would be well worth it to the residents. I've been up to North Commons quite a bit. Those places fill up quickly because people tend to put other things underneath that covered storage, you know, um, and there's no, they're left with no room for real bicycles. So. I wonder if there's a comparable fob system yeah. to rotate bike. bikes. <laughs> that would be nice. It'd be like a Ferris wheel where they just sort of <laughs> There are just by code, um, and we haven't looked at this in several years, but there is a 0 0.1 space per dwelling unit required. Um, so they're clearly, and 50% of those have to be. Um, long term, which means covered storage. Point one. Mm -hmm. So that means for eighty-eight units, it would be nine nine bicycles. Mm -hmm. we, we definitely have to look at that <laughs> if we want to. But I, I mean, uh, to your point, though, I think which is probably what you were getting at is there are fewer cars per. There's not a space for parking one car per unit. Hopefully, folks would have bicycles, so you won't have that opportunity to have that um, gap. Filled with, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think in this way that they're making a judgment about how many cars they want. I mean, they can the market can decide how many bicycles you know they yep. think they need. I mean, pretty common in an apartment to keep your bike in your apartment. Also, well, no. let's not go down that road. Hey, all right, let's no, not get dra dramatic tonight. I guess. All right, <laughs> all right. I've just seen too many large apartment complexes around here where the bicycles are out in the rain and the snow and uh, mm -hmm. not covered, and it ruins them. And people feel less, less um, adaptable, less um, willing to ride their bikes because of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other questions from the board. All right, I'd like to move that we continue this public hearing to uh, December 14th at 7.05 p.m. Four. 7.04 p.m. Was that a second, Sam? And this is for the purpose of getting, receiving comments from the DPW about the revised store management plan. We want the, we want the comments by 7.03. <laughs> probably when we'll get them so the only thing we're adding to the existing conditions is language around the waiver of the height on the setback on the sixth floor we can decide that next time yeah but I, that's so far right yeah, yeah. 
so far that's yeah. Yeah, I just ask where that fifty five foot why fifty five feet as opposed to fifty nine feet? Where did that number come from in the code? Um it came um because in the urban residential C district, which is um, the one on the edge of central business, the height um, allowances there are 55 feet. And so it was thinking about what happens when you have a, a structure built at the edge of this side street district um, and creating um, the first 55 feet, which is the same that's allowed in urban residential C, and then step that back at 55 feet on so that it um, doesn't feel like it's, you know, 70 feet fully on that street front. Yeah. And to clarify, we're not abutting the urban residential. That's right. Exactly. Great. So the most has been made and seconded to continue the hearing until December 14th at 7.04. Should we be taking public comment now so that if there are concerns, they can get addressed before next time? Can we already do that? I don't think so. Oh. Yeah. 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 So would you mind if we hold the yeah. motion Table. for a while? Table your motion. That sounds great. Robert Trills of order. Um, so at this point, we'll open it up for the public. Is there anybody in council chambers here who would like to speak to this application? <laughs> Hearing none, we'll move to the, uh, the Zoom room. Is there anyone? virtually attending who would like to chat with staff no nobody at this point very good seems like all the butters are happy with your plans so i'd um, like to move to untable my move okay <laughs> considered untabled okay so people will be able to ask, come to the public comment on December 14th and comment on the application if they want. The public hearing is still open. All right, all those in favor of uh, uh, moving our hearing to December 14th, continuing it. All right, that's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. He needs a trigger warning for the rest of Yeah, no, I always do. I don't have any minutes, but there's one AR. Of course. Say quick hello. What's up? Quick hello. I think we have to finish up our thing. Like, yeah. A couple of minutes, not much at all. It'll be like five minutes. Yeah, yeah sure. Thanks. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> <laughs> from the city, from the big city. <laughs> no one's ever in it. Carolyn knows. What? What's the giant parking lot right next next to this lot next to that Catholic church. church? No, the solar. Oh, it's Whalen Insurance. They just have like the largest unused. <laughs> The, um, I should have asked this during public comment, but did the, the fire department look at this again for the height and the extra floor? We have like a ladder truck that goes that high. Hi. It's coming, right? <laughs> um, I have a question about this. We're, I forget what the setback is. The side setback is like five feet or something. Yeah. But I, I know it's not a zoning thing. It's a billing code thing of lot line windows. Yeah. It's all legal. There's nothing next to it. And I think it's three, you can go up to three feet with residential. Okay. Like if you're further than three. Yeah. But like what would be the process? Like say they were three, two and a half feet, like it would be legal from zoning. But then if like Goggins wanted to build like the same building next door, there would be like a lot line. You suddenly create a lot line issue. They would just deal with it with lawsuits basically and like yeah, figure I, it out privately. I guess so. I mean, that's a problem now with. You know, the new fire, but uh, I mean, but can't you adjust that with um, fire separated windows? And, and yeah, just well, different construction, isn't it? Well, the new, whatever the new building would, but then layer building would suddenly be non compliant because there'd be a building not so far from it yeah. anymore. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think it's, I think it's not an issue because they're more than three feet. Yeah. Um, but if someone ever tries to build like right up to the lot line, it is an issue to think about. So the new building would be compliant with the old building. 
well the new building would have to pay for fire you know fire rated windows or deluge sprinklers or whatever like there's different ways of dealing with it it gets really complicated but it's much harder to deal with an existing building and so anyway all right so one a and on. oh, nope, there's one a and R. okay so this is um this is out on ryan road um um Long lots at Ryan Road. Um, yeah, I need to. So here we go, Ryan Road. So these, um, neither of these lots are conforming. If you see, there's this, this is a, sort of an old um, flag lot, um, technically with 20 feet of width there. So really, what they're doing is they're um, just swapping the rear lot portion, so um, to give more land to um, um, this parcel and um, just re-segmenting the back um, lot line. So it's the same property owner. They're just doing a swap in the rear um, and they will, there still will be related to and But there's so much money in the back that they're just, they want to add some to make it less non make this lot less non -conforming. God bless them. <laughs> I'm moving. I move we endorse the NR. Most has been made and seconded to endorse the NR on Ryan Road. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All right. I need to put the meeting. Moves were made to adjourn at uh, eight fifteen. Early birds. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.